Of all the big Brexit claims we've heard, there is one that has so far gone unchallenged. The notion that Britain now exports far more outside the EU than inside. But what if this isn't quite right either? To get things straight, I've travelled to Nevada. It might be 5,000 miles from London, but there is one important thing that links Britain and this part of the US. Gold. If we look closely enough, the answer about what's really going on with the UK's trade figures might be found here, somewhere under the ground. This is the Cortez gold mine, the biggest in North America. They've been digging in the ground here since the California gold rush, but things have moved on a bit since then. This is mining on a scale you can barely imagine. Look closely at this digger and you can see it's higher than a three-storey house. You could easily fit a minibus inside that bucket. Between them, those trucks shift rocks and earth weighing more than the Empire State Building every single day. And that's just the open pit mine. They also dig down deep inside the earth. And that's where my journey took me next. Even here, it's not quite how you'd envisage it. No elevator shaft or gold seams. Instead, vast tunnels, big enough to drive through. You're not going to see pickaxes. We don't have the dwarves down here. It's, you know, the smallest heading we have here is 15 foot by 15 foot. It's fairly large equipment. You know, we're running 30 ton trucks. We're about 2,000 feet beneath ground level at the moment. It's pretty hot, a bit sticky. This is where it all begins, though. This is gold. Ore. This gets drilled, gets sent to the surface and turned from what looks like rock into that precious metal we all recognise. That's only the start of a journey that takes it all around the world. After the digging, the crushing, the grinding in these enormous mills, the rinsing in cyanide solution, you heat the product up beyond a thousand degrees and this is what you get, molten gold. This is what all that work was about, the ultimate precious metal. But actually, that's only the start of our story. Once these gold bars are finished here, cooled down and cleaned up, they're flown, usually on a passenger flight, over to Switzerland. There, they're refined even further to get the purity up, and then they're transferred to London. Why? Because it turns out Britain is the world capital for the trade of physical gold. If you think about Heathrow as a major terminal, airport terminal, people can come, get a flight from one place, change flights, go somewhere else. London is known as a terminal market for physical bullion. It's where gold comes to rest, have a cup of coffee maybe before it then moves on somewhere else, goes somewhere else in the world. So as we follow the journey of our gold bars, this is where they'll end up next, hidden somewhere inside the M25. I'm inside one of those high security installations now, so high security I can't tell you precisely where we are, but here is the finished article. These are London Good Delivery gold bars. They are small, but surprisingly heavy. And between the two of them, they're worth the best part of a million pounds. And that's really the nub of this story. A few of these are enough to distort Britain's trade figures, completely changing our perception of the UK's relationship with Europe and the rest of the world. And here's why. Most of the gold that gets sold in London then gets flown off around the world. Some of it to China, some of it to India, some back to Switzerland to be melted into smaller bars and then sent off again. What do those countries have in common? They're all outside the EU. So this constant flow of gold in and out of London makes it look as if Britain is doing far more trade outside Europe than it actually is. Sky News analysis reveals the scale of that distortion. The official trade figures show that in the past five years, only 46% of Britain's goods exports went to the EU. But strip out gold, and it's a different story. Britain actually exported fully half of its physical goods to Europe. In other words, perhaps we're not quite the great trading nation we may think we are. Food for thought as we consider the post-Brexit world. Much of London's gold is to be found here, in the vaults underneath the Bank of England. We asked to have a look inside, but again, due to security reasons, they only open their doors to dignitaries like the Queen. The point, though, is that Britain doesn't own most of this gold. It doesn't mine it or produce it. And yet, when it leaves the country, it looks on the surface like a UK export. And that's because Britain is the world leader in looking after other people's gold. But might that role be in doubt too? This is Baird, the last refinery left in the capital. 
It's a smallish operation, melting down scrap metal into gold bars which it mostly sells to Asian investors. Its boss suspects London's preeminence as the world's gold hub may be under threat. The, the market, well, like all sort of global commodity markets, is shifting eastwards. If we do see, um, to an extent, attacks on the London market from the EU or from the US, all it appears to do so far is drive the business to Asia. It's the same worry as the one facing the city. Will Brexit undermine Britain's reputation for being a good place to bring your money or store your gold? The great irony is that the vast majority of the gold being pulled out of the ground back here in America will end its life under the ground somewhere else in the world. But as long as it comes via London, it will continue to confuse the picture of how much trade we do with the rest of the world. Ed Conway, Sky News in Nevada.